Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of solar cell with a boost converter in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get into the topic for today. So this is the MATLAB model of a solar cell interfaced with a boost converter. At the first place, we need to understand what is the operation of the circuit. So what is the circuit trying to do? So we basically have four solar cells connected in series and each value of the solar cell uh, is 3 volt. So 3 volt connected in series 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 will give you 12 volt at the output terminals. This 12 volt is given as an input to a boost converter. As we know boost converter basically increases the DC voltage to a higher value. So 12 volt is increased to 60 volt. The circuit is designed such that we will be getting 60, out, 60 volt at the output. So you have this boost converter in closer loop mode. This is the closer loop operation that is taking place. So I have already made three videos. One with respect to generating 12 volt only with respect to this particular portion of the module. I have already done and one video and um, two videos with respect to boost converter one with respect to open loop mode and one with respect to closed loop mode in open loop mode I have explained you how the design of the components and how to select inductor capacitor resistor values and all those things in closed loop mode I have explained both the operation of the boost converter along with the closed loop uh, path that is there so watch those three videos at the first place before starting off with this video because those three videos will give you a greater picture on how to analyze them and this will be a very simple uh, com combination of all the three videos put together however with respect to this video I'll be continuing from this section uh, as we've got 12 volt here I'll be building this circuit and I'll be demonstrating what is happening with respect to this circuit and we'll be checking the output voltage so let's go to MATLAB and start our simulation so here we are in MATLAB uh, Simulink so at the first place ensure that you have a power queue block so search for power queue and add this block to the model and uh, that is basically the compiler for uh, the system with respect to power electronic applications so once that is done uh, our next step is to add the blocks with respect to the boost converter we need a controlled voltage source so search for controlled voltage source and uh, you will be adding this block so be very careful while adding this block because there are other controlled voltage source over here over here don't choose the ones that are there in blue choose the ones that are there in black because now we are interfacing with a power electronic converter circuit so once that is done we will be requiring a series rlc branch so search for series rlc and uh, add this block as well once this is also done we will be requiring a mosfet switch so we are not using a thyristor because we need an external commutation circuit in order to turn them off but in case of rectifiers and all those things we'll use it because it turns off automatically because of natural commutation so i'll be adding mosfet and once that is done i'll be requiring a diode so search for diode and um, add that block as well choose the ones that are there in black now because this is used for power electronic application and uh, once this is also added we'll be requiring a capacitor so so basically we don't have to search for capacitor the series RLC branch can directly be converted to capacitor and resistor respectively so uh, we'll be searching for our next component which is basically a scope which is used to see the output waveform so search for scope and add this block as well we need an voltage measurement block in order to measure the output voltage so search for voltage measurement and add this block as well now in the feedback path for establishing closed loop uh, system we need a constant block which is basically a reference value that we enter here add this block as well once this is also done we will be requiring uh, a com some block where it compares both the values so you will be using a sum block so search for sum there is a, an operation called a subtract that is available so we'll be subtracting the reference value with the actual value the error signal will be given to a PID controller so search for uh, PID you will be getting it right at the top so search for PID and it is available choose the ones with respect to yes domain that is laplace transform domain add that block as well once this is also added the output will be given to a pwm generator so search for pwm generator and you'll be getting it uh, so be very careful while choosing pwm generator because there are a lot of pwm generator that are available so choose pwm generator dc to dc pwm generator this is the subscript with respect to this we have to choose so 
once these are all added let us place them in appropriate positions so that we can get started with respect to our circuit diagram i'll be placing the voltage source at this position and scope at this point diode in this position mosfet over here and in inductor uh, is required the source terminals so at the first place we will be using a controlled voltage source because with respect to the solar module interface we need to use it uh, you're not using a normal dc voltage source because we cannot extend the circuit if you're using a normal dc voltage source we need need a connection point between the previous circuit and this circuit isn't it as a result we'll be going for this the signal terminal over here this s stands for signal so take the tapping from the signal terminal and connect it to this point this is where you'll be getting the signal from the previous circuit that is 12 volt and i'll be giving the positive at this point and negative in this particular fashion so before that double click on this choose the value of inductor to be equal to 60 micro according to our design so design procedure and all those things is explained in open loop simulation so of boost converter so watch that video that will be really helpful for you to understand the process rotate the mosfet double click on this and disable the measurement port we're not using that so double click on the measurement port with respect to diode as well even if you don't disable them nothing is going to happen but just to avoid additional confusions with respect to the circuit we are doing that so once this is done let us connect the drain in this particular fashion diode is connected over here control c control v with respect to the inductor rotate it by using control r and then change it to a capacitor the value of capacitor that is chosen is 16.44 so that is according to the design procedure so connect it in this particular fashion and connect it at this point over here so we also need a resistor so control c control v double click on this and uh, connect a resistor with a value of 16.22 according to our design so once this is done connect it between these two points over here in this particular fashion so we'll be measuring the voltage across the output terminals over here so connect it at this point and um, i'll be zooming out a little bit and i'll be connecting the scope over here now what we'll be doing in the closer loop path is that we will be taking the tapping from this particular point over here and i'll be giving it to over here uh, this is the voltage that we are getting at the output terminals so connect it at this point so you can directly take the tapping from this point and you will be connecting it to this position i'll be giving the constant block over here so double click on this and change the value to be equal to 60 so whatever voltage that you want should be entered over here at the output terminals so enter that that will be compared with the standard reference value and i'll be giving it to a pad controller so the error signal is given to a pad controller double click on the pid controller and we have to select the values so there are various design procedures that you can follow trial and error method iterative method where you can design the pid controller uh, for each iterations or you can go with laplace transform approach which is given by these type of equations so i have uh, selected a value such that uh, it reduces a certain portion of the waveform with respect to the error signal that we have so in case you want to to improve the transient response or the steady state behavior of the system or the peak overshoot or the settling time you can suit you can suitably choose the value of the pid values and you can click on ok i've chosen integral value to be equal to 7 and click on ok I'll be giving it to a PWM generator block and this will be given to a gate block so this will basically generate the pulses according to the deviations in the supply or the load terminals and consequently it will maintain an output voltage of 60 volt so in case you want um, in practical applications in case you want 60 volt as a DC supply and uh, you're using a solar uh, module uh, or a solar cell you call that so you have to uh, get 60 volt you're generating only 12 volt using a solar module if suppose so in case you want to generate 60 volt only with the solar module the cost of the solar cell goes on increasing so instead of that having a converter which increases the DC voltage that is available is always advantages isn't it so as a result these type of circuits are so please make one important uh, correction with respect to this circuit give the positive uh, polarity of the compare the sum subtract block over here to the constant block take the negative tapping from this point this is because if uh, you get a voltage of about 59 at the output terminal and you compare it with 60 volt positive value of the output voltage is more dominant and consequently it produces an output voltage corresponding to it and that is why we need uh, the constant block at the positive terminal otherwise there will be uh, a deviation with respect to the output voltage that you have to get now let us click on run and uh, wait for the simulation to take place
all right now let us double click on the scope in order to see the output waveform so we can zoom in this uh, waveform by using this particular option so if you carefully observe we are getting a larger value of ripple from 45 volt or to 80 volt so however the average value is approximately equal to 60 you can further reduce these ripples by suitably uh, selecting the value of capacitor so however we are getting a mean value of 60 over here if you carefully observe although the deviation is very large with respect to the ripple so you can uh, increase the value of capacitance based on the requirement and get a constant value of 60 output voltage at the load terminals so this is how you'll be interfacing a boost converter with a solar cell you can try it for different Conf configurations as well so by having a buck converter cuck converter or a flyback converter and a lot of other configurations so there are videos uh, with respect to individual converters as well you can watch them to get a clear picture to interface them as well so if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates please do keep supporting thanks for watching this video